What's up, Cartmasters? Knights it back with another video. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that's been debated over the last week since the Sunbreak title update number two presentation from Tokyo Game Show. Now, is paid layered weapon DLC an issue? My short opinion on the matter? The answer is no. But I also feel very, very conflicted with how I feel about this. After researching and seeing what both sides of the argument have to say, I honestly think it's hard to really come up with a firm stance. On the one hand, we've always had a lot of free content given to us in the form of event quests or collaborations. From older games, you've always had things like the Final Fantasy armor from 4U, or even armors from other IPs like The Witcher and World and Fire Emblem and Zelda in GU. Not to mention, we also had seasonal event lobbies and armors like the ones we had in World and Iceborne. Looking at Rise though, we've still gotten a good chunk of free stuff, including a lot of those seasonal event armors and even Guild Palace armor from Iceborne, but the actual substance of the events that we've gotten are largely lackluster. Obviously, not every single quest is going to offer something amazing, but it's also kind of a kick in the nuts when a lot of the rewards are relegated to largely gestures and stickers. Well, granted, we do have some pretty cool armor sets and whatnot, but I feel that there was a large possibility that this was done in order to set Rise up for more payable DLC. Let's rewind a little bit. Now, Monster Hunter World started the trend of payable DLC in the form of deluxe sets, which included a bunch of things like the Layered Samurai and Knight sets in World and Iceborne, respectively. You also ended up getting things like room goods, hairstyles, and ornaments. Largely extra things, right? They were all cosmetic and they didn't really have an impact on your core gameplay experience, especially since a lot of other free gear like weapons and armors were handed out for free in the form of events, title updates, and collaboration content. However, when you take this and compare it to Rise, the amount of paid DLC that is inside the stores are largely all layered armors in addition to voice packs, hairstyles, stickers, and gestures. They also all total up to being much more than what the price of the base game and Sunbreak would add up to. Now, th this is potentially where there is a huge issue considering that the layered armors and soon to be layered weapons are a part of the game. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of people that will argue that fashion hunting is 50% of the end game of Monster Hunter and that putting layered anything behind a paywall is a huge slap concerning that we've more or less have gotten them for free before. However, I will say that so long as it's purely cosmetic and not a paywall function being sold, I really don't see the harm. Especially, you know, I think it'd be worse comparatively if you were to lock a feature like, like let's say for example if waterfall was locked behind a paywall to the base game of rise then that could potentially be an issue in the form of an expansion however there's no problem there now businesses at the end of the day will do what they can to make an extra dollar or two and if customers see the value in it there's really no problem so long as what we receive as free content generally lines up with the quality and quantity of what we've got from the current or previous games I don't see an immediate cause for concern. However, the slippery slope argument to this is that we've seen them slowly introduce these extra items in the store, and we were all, oh, it's just rune goods or hairstyles, this is fine. But as they started introducing a crap ton of layered armors, and now for the first time in the series, layered weapons as pale DLC items, not to mention the other hairstyles and voice packs, what's stopping them from making other things like battle passes or other pay to win functions that would have otherwise be included in the game with no concrete evidence it's honestly anyone's guess for the time being there is not much of an issue especially since it seems at least the layered weapons seem to have a little bit of extra oomph to give the price tag a bit more of a tangible value plus it's purely cosmetic having been a fan of monster Hunter since the freedom two days i would like to think that capcom would never do anything to significantly ostracize the new and old fan bases by locking significant features behind a paywall i don't really think that things like extra voices hairstyles or layered gear is really an issue as paid dlc so long as the items offered are purely cosmetic i actually personally think that the events and collaborations technically the lack of quality thereof is more of a problem but we can always save that conversation for another video don't forget to drop a like and uh, don't forget to let me know what you guys think in the comments and smash the subscribe button and bell icon to get more Monster Hunter and variety content from yours truly. You can also catch me live streaming on Twitch where I stream a variety of games including Genshin Impact, Gundam Evolution, and of course, Monster Hunter. Also, a very huge shout out to all of my cart masters and cart lords supporting me directly on Coffee. Thanks for your guys' contributions. I can safely focus on these videos and keep pumping out content. That's it for me, Cartmasters. As always, stay safe, get mad, get sad, have fun. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!
my god, can someone please clip that? That was so cool! I'm actually so cracked! Yo, let's fucking go, you sports all day, dude! Oh, 